So now we have now we have the movie object with the director, the title, the genre, the duration. Um, all of these properties are string or numbers, but we can have properties also with arrays or other objects or function, as we were saying. And we can add properties and we can also delete the properties with the delete instruction, mm, let's say genre. So delete uh, the property to delete uh, in either notation. Mm, here I'm using the dot notation, but you can also use the square notation. It's the same. It's for deleting a property. And note that the delete doesn't have, it's not a function. It's just a, a word, a keyword. Mm? This is to delete property. And if you want to loop to iterate on the object, we have already seen that you can use for, mm? for instance, for prop in object. Mm? Again, of is for things that are iterable and in is for objects that are not iterable like normal object. You don't have an order in an object, it's an order at. So here, for instance, we can iterate for each property, for each key, key the, the, the object has. So we can say console.log, and we can say that the keyword is the value, for instance. So we can write props, prop is its value. Movie prop. So this will print uh, title is uh, inception, duration is 108, and director is Nolan. So one element at a time. So if we run this, you see that title is inception, duration is 180, and director is Nolan. The property that we have in that moment. Mm, not the one we deleted. And if we try to access a property that does not exist, it will give us undefined. So if you want to check if a property is in the object or not, you have to check if it's undefined or not. If it's undefined, it's not there. Or it's there and you define it as undefined, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have a property defined as undefined. Maybe null. Um, what else? So all, all of these is actually in the slides. I just uh, <coughs> do it in the code. But here there is the dot o bracket square notation um, with the same things about spaces in the properties and the delete and the things about the variable and the undefined and for in. So exactly what we have seen in, in Visual Studio Code is also in the slides. Um, if you want to iterate over objects, over properties, you can iterate in the entire object as we have seen, but if you want to iterate for only the keys, there is an object.keys name of the object that give you an array of keys, only of the keys, only of the name of the properties. And there is also an object.entries that give you an array of all the pairs key value of the object. So object.entries movie will give us an array in which in the first position we have an array with title, inception. In the second position we have another array that say um, duration 180 and in the third position we have another array that has first position director and the other and in the second position um, Nolan. So every couple, every pair's key value in an array within another array. 
if you want both, mm, for whatever reason. And we can also copy objects. Mm. Uh, so if we do Is this a copy? <coughs> no. Good. This is mm, just an assignment. If we want to copy, uh, we need to use object.assign, and also all of these in, is, is in the slide, movie. Mm? We need to use something like this. So object.assign takes all the properties of an object and assign it, as the name say, to another object. So in this case, we are saying that get all the properties of movie and assign it to another object. And this other object is the empty object and return the result. So it's copying all the properties of movie in an empty object. And since it's empty, it's just as the properties of movies. And then return the results in the variable. Okay, so this is one way of making copies. So this actually is not another movie, but it's more same movie. Because it's a copy of the movie. But assign can also be used to assign uh, things to, um, to merge, for instance, objects. Hmm? Let me get them for, from the slide. Um, uh, well, clearly, this is a shallow copy, hmm? like for arrays. It's a shallow copy. It's not a deep copy, so it's copy. If inside there is another object, that, that copy will not be done. Um, you can also merge properties on existing object. Mm -hmm. So you can assign another object, like title JavaScript, to an existing object, book, and return the merge of the two objects. So book two will have all the properties of book plus title. Mm -hmm. So it's merging. Or you can also merge properties on a new object. Mm, that is adding, mm, so we want to put title together with book and assign it to an empty object. And this empty object will give us a new object. Mm. So when there is an empty object, we are creating an empty object. Otherwise, it's just putting things in the first object that we have. Mm. And since, but also here, it's putting things in the first object that we have, but the first object we have is empty, so it's new, and so we have a new object. So here we have the, we add the title to book, mm? and then book is assigned to book two, but it's book. Here we have an empty object, mm? so we are assigning title to book, and then <coughs> these things to the empty object, and the empty object is assigned to book two, but since it's an empty object, it's a new object, so book two is different from book. Okay. Yes, no, maybe, sort of. Mm. So, just to make a concrete example, so console.log, same movie. Mm. So, how this assign is working? We get all the properties of movie and we assign all the properties to an empty object. And this empty object that in that moment became complete with all the other properties is ass assigned to a variable that is same movie. So in this case, this is a copy because this is empty. And so the result is an empty object that has the property of the other. If we do object dot assign a movie, and then we have another object, let's say budget, how much did it cost inception? A lot. Too much. We have idea. How much money? 
1 million. 1 million. Mm? 1 million used. Okay? We are, in this case, assigning the budget to the movie. And so movie mm, will have this new property. We are not creating a copy because there is no empty object. We are just assigning the second object to the first one. And in this case, not even returning something. We can return something, but it's just an assignment to another object. Hmm? If we want to have another, uh, let's say, if we want to keep track or const, well, um, I don't know what else to add to movie, but um, cast. Um, let's say improve the movie, and we can say object dot assign. If we want to have a copy with the cast, so another object with the cast, we can write the empty object, movie, and uh, the cast. That we are not going to write all the cast, but let's say that's once a string, but it could also be more than a string, just say that there is a cast. So this improved movie as is the movie with the cast associated to a new assigned to a new object, an empty object, and then the empty object is assigned to a variable. Hmm? Yes? Uh, if we didn't put the, uh, the empty object, uh, the assign would modify also movie. Like here. Oh, okay. hmm? So we can try a soul. Um, so. So this is title inception duration is 180 director is this four <coughs> the same object is actually the same object inception duration and director the assign with the budget is the same object with the budget but this is movie we printed movie so here inception 180 no nolan and one million and this is the improved movie with the cast but this is another object than this because here we printed movie and here we printed improved movie and if we here we print movie we see the same results as before without the cast because this is an assignment to a new object to an empty object so is this empty object that does the duplication that not does the duplication because it's never a duplication it's it's creating a new object because a new object is not assigned to any variable, is not associated to any variable, and so when we add it and we add to a variable, then we keep track, we start keeping track of that object. That otherwise is not associated to any variable. And here we can continue. You can also write comma, other things, and the assignment is always from one object to the other. So we can continue to assign things if we want. Typically, two or three uh, are, are the things that you're going to use because you have an object you want to assign something or to merge another object and then maybe creating a new object as a result so three things like in this case is typically the maximum value that you use okay so this is for merging and duplicating object another way to um, inception again let's appropriate also for the movie um, Another way to duplicate object is with the spread operator. Like for arrays. We are creating a new object with the same content. We are spreading the object, the properties of the object, in a new object and assign the new object to inception again. If I assign an existing property, do I override it? Yes. 
Okay, so this is another way to duplicate an entire object without clearly... And then you can also... Um, you can also use the spread operator to merge objects, like here. Because you are creating a new object in which the content of the first element is the old object, and then you can add other properties. Hmm? Like merging. Exactly as you were doing with arrays. Just now we have objects and not array, but the, the meaning is, is, is the same. Uh, okay, well, the difference is that this spread operator for objects start from ES9 and was not included in ES6, but in Node.js 18 and in the browser it's, it's supported. So, this is, so we, were targeting, we are targeting ES6 for most of the things, but for a few things like the spread operator that is the same that we have in arrays, but also object we just upgraded to a newer version for a few things, just to give similarity with what you already do, okay? But until 2018 or, or 2019, you only have the assign. You cannot do that. But nowadays, you can also duplicate object in this way with a spread operator. Uh, well, check if property exists with in, hmm? property in, key in, object, check if the, sorry, this way. Property in object checks if the property is in the object. And if it is, it, pre it, it say true, otherwise it say false. Uh, do not use it with array because it's um, random results. Why random? Because this is check if the property is in the object, but on array, this is not the property. Right, this is the value. We don't have prop property in an array, we just have the values. Uh, is there a difference between uh, adding a property using uh, assign or uh, just declaring the property using, uh, for example, movie dot, uh, No. So is it yeah, what, what, what typically is used assign is for adding, you know, you have two objects and you want to merge together the objects. So you have three properties on one, one side, another three properties in the other, and you want to put all together and to have six properties in the end, right? To merge. If you have one property, is, you can just add the property. If, it, if it's not even a copy, you can just have the copy, add the property, yes. Um, object creation, the, the usual way to create an object is with the, the parentheses, but you can also use new object or object.create, but again, uh, most of the time is for a, an object like that, like movie, is just parentheses, like we created, parentheses and then key um, and the value, mm -hmm. the pairs, key, key and value separated by a comma, like we did for the movie. Okay, so let's close this. And then I will put, I will put online all these examples that we are going, we, we are doing, so you have all of those if you want. Uh, let me create another file that's called functions because we need to do also functions. So um, let me check if I skip something for objects. No. No. Okay, functions. Functions are objects. Let's start with the, the thing that it's the most diff strange things that functions are object. So you can do with function whatever you can do with an object. You can assign a function to a variable. You can have a variable that con contains a function. Uh, that's in an object is a method um, because it's a property. Uh, you can pass a function as an argument to another function like we have seen with sort. Sort is a function that accepts a function as the argument of the function. Uh, it's, it's sort of inception also, all this. Um, and also you can use a function as a return value. So you can return from a function a function. Because in the end it's an object, so you can do basically whatever you, you can do with an object. So this, is, this gives us a lot of flexibility and also some edge. Um, so we have three ways in JavaScript to define function, to declare function. One is the, let's say, more common way that we are used also from other languages. So keyword 
a name of the function and any argument that the function has. Mm? So function, name of the function, open parentheses, the parameters, zero or one or two or more parameters. Mm? So function, welcome, open parentheses, name. Mm? The normal, the classical way to define function. Um, Okay. Uh, the parameters are, well, a list of comma separated names, A, B, C, D, whatever. Uh, parameters are always passed by value. And um, you can define parameters as default with a default value like this one. Mm -hmm. So if you don't pass the parameter, if you call this function and you don't pass the parameter B, B assume value 1 always if you pass the parameter use the, the value that you you pass and if you don't have the default you don't pass the parameter so you call this function as with three and that's it without b and b is not a default one it b will get the value undefined by default hmm? um, so you can have a function with three parameter and call it with one or with two hmm? and then you have to handle the cases in which uh, you you don't have the other parameters either with the default like in this case or with the undefined or ending the undefined mm -hmm. like in this case check if p is equal to undefined then do something mm -hmm. where p is a parameter that is missing uh, you can also have a variable number of parameter um, using to, me, meaning i don't know how many parameters i have it could be at least two but it could be also more than two. 10, 100, I don't know. Hmm? Uh, because, for instance, it's for doing a sum, an addition, and I want to do an addition to all the parameters that I receive. Or like in the mean. Hmm? The mean gets all the parameters that you want to give them. It's not just three parameters to compute the minimum in the mat.mean that we have used before. It's just all the parameters. And you can say uh, in JavaScript that you have a variable number of parameters, saying that there are maybe, in this example, in the function fun, um, there are two fixed parameters. You expect to have at least two parameters in that function. And then you can have multiple parameters with the three dots that in this case is not called spread, but it's called the rest. But still three dots like before. So in this case is the spread parameter for arrays and object is called the rest parameter in function and it means basically that whatever you have there hmm, will get all the parameter except the first two and will put all of them in one array hmm. so here is like writing parameter one parameter two and a endlessly long array endlessly depending on the computer clearly so this R will be actually an array that is variable length. And so in the code, you can use R like an array. So here you see that there is four with off. That is the, the one that we are using for iterating on arrays. So the rest parameter will accept all the parameters that, that you, you add to the function and it must be the last one. So in the end, all, everything else is with the rest parameter, if you want to have a variable number of parameters. Uh, the other way to declare function, and then all things about parameter apply to the other way of declaring function. The other way to declare function is function expression, uh, where you, you see that there is a difference. Well, function expression could be named or without name. So either function expression or named function expression. And you see what is the difference, that you have a variable in front of it. So you don't have a function that you call. You have a variable that the function is associated to a variable. But it's still a function and still behave like a function. It's just as you, you can use fn from that moment on. And that's why it can also be without name. Because the name that you use is the name of the variable that you declare. 
it's shorter. It's typically shorter, but it's still a function. It's just another way to declare a function. It's not, it's not that one is best, better than the other. They're equivalent. And then it is called function expression. They are put together in form of expression. Um, and you see here we have a function and a function expression, and they are represented in the same exact way. There is no difference. Square is a normal function, and cube is uh, a function expression, no difference. They are written also in the same way, just no difference. And they are also represented with a sort of variable. One is the one that you gave that is square, and the other uh, cube, and the other one is square that is not explicitly named because it's the name of the function. But it's actually no difference. It's just another way to write the same thing. It's always a function. Well, the difference again is that you, uh, in, in, with the, the function expression, you create a new object of type function, a new function object. Uh, and then you can assign it to one variable, to multiple variables. You can pass it as variable without invocating it, without calling the function. You can pass the function, but without calling the function. And you can call the function in another moment. These are all edge cases. No, well, not all edge cases, but they are particular cases, but in some, in some circumstances are useful. Um, so for instance, the function expression are one, uh, the one that you create within an object. Because within an object, you have a method that corresponds to a function. So you have a variable that is equal to a function. Or you can pass it as a parameter to another function, like in the, um, in the sort method that we have seen, in the sort function that we have seen, in which you can either create another function somewhere and then call it, or you can pass a function directly or write directly there a function without a name, even without name, because you don't care in that moment of the name of the function. You want the operation to be done. Uh, and the third way, that is actually one of the most popular uh, way of writing function in, in JavaScript, even if it's slightly different from the other three as behavior, uh, the other two as behavior, is the arrow function. That it's similar to function expression in the sense that you create an ob a variable, but then you just write, you don't write function, you just write the parameter and the body of the function with an arrow that separate the parameter with the actual body of the function. And these are the three ways of creating functions. So in the end, you create a function. And the first two ways actually are creating very, very similar function. With the arrow function, some things change, but not at this level. Um, it's, you see, if you, if you represent, like before, the arrow function, it's written slightly different, but still is a function, it behaves like a function. Uh, arrow functions are not named. You cannot have an arrow function with name. The name is the one of the, uh, of the variable that contains the arrow function, if needed. And it's quite useful, like in the, in the sort, before we use an arrow function, because we didn't need to create a variable, a function used multiple times. We just have one sort, and we created a function for that moment, and then we, we don't care about that function anymore after the sort. We don't need to reuse the sort, the, the function within the sort, in that program. If we need to reuse it, we can declare outside of the sort and then reuse the function whenever we need, clearly, like a normal function. Uh, well, parameters in narrow function, you can have... Uh, so if you don't have parameter, you must have the parentheses. If you have one parameter, you can or cannot have the parentheses, your choice. If you have more than one parameter, you, again, must have the parentheses containing the parameter. So parentheses, no parameter, arrow, um, do something, body of the function. If you have one parameter, it's the same. If you have two, two or more parameter, you can have, you have, you, have to, to, you have to add the parentheses and you can have the default like before. And if you don't pass the parameter, it's undefined, like exactly like before. Um, so by default, a narrow function 
return uh, undefined. If you want to uh, return a value, you have to use return as a keyword. Uh, only one value can be returned. Hmm? There could be an array, but still one value. Um, and arrow function, so this is applied to all the, the functions. Arrow function can have an implicit return, so you can omit writing a return, if and only if there is one value in the function. So in this case, return square x multiply square x, you can omit the return, you can omit the parentheses, and just write square x multiply square x. These two lines are identical. There is no change between the two lines. It's just less letters. But this works only if you have one line, one thing in the function. If you have a multi-body, a multi-line function, even an arrow function, you have to say which is the element to return. In this case, this one element, so that, that's the one you want to return because there is nothing else. But if you have four lines, you have to, to say which is the value to return with the return keyword again. Um, well, you can have a nested function if you want. So one function that inside has another function. Um, hmm? Like in this case, in which you have a function that computes the hypotenuse, and inside you have another function that is the arrow function that computes the square. So instead of having an external function that computes the square, you just have, you just define and use the function in that moment, and then you proceed. And a nested function is preferred to use arrow function. It's not mandatory, but it's preferred. Um, and when you have nested, nested function, here we come back to the scope. So the inner function is scoped within the external function. It cannot be called outside. So this square here exists only within hypotenuse because it's defined in the scope of hypotenuse. So you cannot here write square something and refer to this function because this function ceases to exist after this function is over. Uh, however, nested function can access the value of the function that contain them. So square can access to A and B if they want or any other variable defined here in this hypotenuse function. So external function provide information to internal function that can access to the outside information, but the internal function does not exist outside of the external function that declare it. And this is linked to uh, one thing in, in JavaScript that's called closure that we are just going to mention because we, we rarely, we will rarely use it during the course, but it's a, 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 an important concept in JavaScript and in other programming language. Um, so the definition is closure is a name given to a feature in the language by which a nested function executed after the execution of the function that contain it can still accept, can still access to the scope of that function. So closure is, a, pro, is a, um, a functionality, a feature of the language in which you can have the square function called, executed after hypotenuse and still having access to A and B of hypotenuse, even if that function does not exist anymore after hypotenuse. So this is uh, closure in general. And in JavaScript, uh, it works because the scoping in JavaScript is called lexical scoping. So each new function defines a scope for the variable that declared inside the function. So nested function, as I said before, can access to the variables of the function that contains it. 
and this is also can be done in a multiple way so you can have a outer function that contains an inner function that contains another inner function and the, the last inner function still access to all the variables of the enclosing function okay and every function that is an object remember the scope where it was defined even after the external function does not exist anymore in the execution what it means look at this example we have a function that's called greeter that gets a name put a name in a variable and then define another function that is an inner function that just get hello plus the name so if we call greeter luigi and we call greeter luigi the results that we expect is not what happens here but the results that we expect to to be printed at a certain point is hello luigi however here there is no print there is no console log there is a return and this greeter returns hello what is hello function. the function and notice how this function is returned what is strange here what is missing here for a function parenthesis. the parenthesis so a function with the parenthesis is a function that you execute in that moment if you write a law open and close parenthesis you are executing a law in that moment mm? so you are returning a law plus the name but here you are not executing the function because no parenthesis you are returning the entire function because the function is an object and you can return any object including the function so here the greeter this hello tom or this hello jerry are actually the functions are actually this copy of this this function here a reference of this function and if you do console log a lot of with the parentheses here you are going to execute this function this parentheses here execute the function hello and thanks to closure and thanks to lexical scoping this hello tom will print because of the console log hello tom and hello jerry even if this my name was defined in the greeter function that here does not exist anymore that's because this function here remember the scope in which it was created so remember that this my name is in one case tom and in the other case jerry and so when it's executed for real that's here is the only moment in which it's executed then it remembers the scope and can produce the right result okay this is closure having a function at a certain point that even if it's outside of the scope outside of the inner function since you return it you can still use it in the rest of the program and remember the properties that he had in that moment and again this is possible because functions are object so we can return function in other programming language you cannot return function you can execute function you can declare and use it you cannot move function around modify functions at a random moment here you can And this is what I've said. And closure, it's, it's a nice feature for these things, but you can, for instance, use closure to emulate objects if you want. Because actually functions are objects, so it's easy to emulate objects. It's not really something that you do, but you can. Um, and also object with methods if you want. Again, not something that we are going to use objects because we have objects doesn't make sense to create a function to emulate an object but it's possible thanks to closure to do things um, it's fine and well just let me tell you what is this uh, in JavaScript we are not basically I think that we are not ever going to use this in this course but just to tell you that they exist uh, in JavaScript exist functions that are 
created and invoked immediately. So you don't have a function stored somewhere, you don't have a function memorizing a variable, you don't have a function you want to reuse. You want a function, you want to call it, and you want to forget about it. And these are called uh, immediately invoked function expression, in which is a function expression within parentheses, and it's invoked because it has another couple of parentheses. So this will define the function, execute the function, this will define the function and execute the function here. So here you will have, after executing these, you will have printed on screen three, because a, well, a equal three console log A. So this is the declaration and the execution, contemporary execution of the subsequent, immediately subsequent execution of the function. This is something that exists in JavaScript. You can create and use immediately a function and then forget about it. You don't even need to put it in a variable, etc. You just can call it, define and call it immediately. This is a feature of the language. And again, also these can emulate objects, but it's not really um, fundamental. And again, we are probably not going to use uh, the immediately invoked function ever in the course, but they exist. And in, in, complex React, in complex JavaScript project, uh, they have sense. Sometimes you, it's useful to use them, but in really, really complex uh, JavaScript project. And then uh, we have the uh, construction function. So function that are used to define an object. And they have the keyword this, and they create an instance of the object with the keyword new. What they remind you? The constructor, the constructor function, the constructor, the constructor of an object that you define as a class. So this is that part here. You can have an object that is the definition of the object, like you have the class, and with the construction function, you can build an instance of the object. Okay, so here, for instance, we have a construction function that has three parameters and does a few things, and then you have an instance of that object that is a specific card that is the eagle, um, Talon TSI of 1993. That's a specific instance of that object, of that function. So this is a way in JavaScript to create objects, to create instances of object that should follow a certain uh, structure. So not a random object with properties that came and, and go, but you want to define something, a structure, like, okay, a car is represented in this way, and then you can create object of this car. And then these are still objects, so you can still delete, add the properties as before, but you can also structure hmm, what, is, um, uh, what is a car, in this case, for you in your program. Um, and they typically, and they start with a capital letter to um, identify them separately from other kind of functions. Okay, so let's uh, build the construction function of the movie. So let's build a construction function for all the movies and then we can create an instance for inception. So what we're going to write? What we're going to write? Line one? Use strict. Okay, so we can create a construction function that we can call movie with a capital letter. No, sorry. And movie, when we want to build a movie, we want to have properties, parameters, like a title, Let's use the one that we had before. Title, genre, and duration. Hmm? So how do we define these properties within the, the function? We will use this.title equal title, this.genre equal genre. And this is more you know, similar to what you are um, used to in uh, other languages, duration. 
right? You, you build, let's say, a class, you build a constructor, and then you say this property is equal to the property that I receive from the function. Mm? And here we can also um, define a method. Mm? This dot is long, and we can define it as a narrow function. without parameter. So we can say that this is a boolean. How a long movie is more than, more than two hours. More than two hours. So 120. OK? And here we don't need return because it's one line. So the return is implicit. And we don't even need parent parentheses, etc. We just and we can also say, for instance, that this is actually time instead of duration. You know, you can you can call it whatever you, you like this. And so here you can also write this dot time, for instance, if you prefer. They, they are equivalent. But duration is the one that we get from here and is instead the value stored in the in the function. So, let's create a movie. Let inception equal new movie. And we said that the title is inception, the genre is sci-fi, and the duration is 180, we said. Right? And we can create another movie. Another movie? Let's use a movie that is shorter. <laughs> Not Avatar, then. It. Uh, it. Uh, new movie. It the, the horror movie, right? It the horror movie. Yes. Okay. Uh, genre horror. And duration, who knows? 90. Okay. And um, so if we do console.log, so let's see how they appear. Inception and console.log it. So we defined a uh, Two movies with their properties. We didn't define is long, clearly, because it's automatically calculated from here. So this is true if the time is more than uh, 120, so 119, actually. We can add an equal. Um, otherwise, and we pass the other parameter. So if we run this, function.js, where did I create it? Oh, yes. Function with the n. OK. Okay, so if we print the two movies, we see, first of all, that we have a reference of the construction function, how we name it, movie. So both are movie. So they pertain to that construction function. And then they have a title, a genre, a time that is clearly different. And then we have these properties that is, is long, that is a function. Mm? So it's a method. We, if we print it, it say it's a function. It doesn't show us the result of the function because we need to call the function to see the output. Instead, here we're just printing the content. We are not calling the function. So if we want to call the function, we can say, for instance, is long. 
with the parentheses. Hmm? So is arrow function hoisted? Sorry? Is arrow function hoisted? Can you, that means we have to declare it before. Are arrow function here hoisted? Are the content of our function moisted more than our own function? Um, I don't remember. I think so. I think you can define it here and before time, and it should work because it's 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 work when it's executed. So it's executed when the, the object is entire entirely done. So if we print is long, hmm, we see that it's clearly false because it's 90 minutes that is less than uh, 120. Hmm? And, and this is again another way, normal way to call uh, a function, uh, a method. You have an object and then you call a method from the object. Okay? So let's try to move these to see. Yes, it works anyway because it's it's executed. So when it's filled out, is is executed because you you have to remember that JavaScript. Um, then it's it's better to put it in the end because it's also logically to say okay you have a variable and then I use the variable in another function. So for you for readability and for you to remember what you are doing, um, but remember uh, how JavaScript execute program. It parses the entire file first, so it fills the gap, it fills the, the holes that we found, and then execute the, the parsed tree. So if it's just one line before or after, it's not terrible here in this case. This, yes, this sort of hoisting. Um, okay, and if you see, just to, to let you know, then we can stop here. Uh, the Visual Studio Code uh, tell you you don't have, you don't, don't do this. But Visual Studio Code tell you, listen, this construction function might be converted to a class declaration. We are not going to see classes, but if you do software engineering in English, I think that they will use classes. Um, so just to mention this, that actually classes are exactly these things here. It's just another way to write these things here. So if we convert it to classes, You see what happens, that you have class movie and a function is called constructor, and that's it. So the difference is just minimal, it's just the fact that you use class and constructor, instead of function movie. Everything else is the same. Because again, classes in JavaScript are just a different way to write this. There is no other difference. It's just it's, it's actually called syntactically sugar. To just give you the idea that it is uh, just an addition, just from a syntactical perspective. It's not, it's not changing anything in practice under the hood. It's just a different way to write the same thing. Hmm? So we will use mostly object and function script um, and function construction is in this way. Oh, the other difference is that within a class, use strict is enabled by default. That's another difference. But apart from that, you see, it's mostly the same thing. Okay? Why do we have function anonymous? Sorry? Uh, for the is long function anonymous. For that difference. Say that again? There is a function anonymous for is long. Yes. This is an animal function. Uh, no, on the uh, on the results, I think. Oh, this uh, is this. Because the year we were printed, we were printing inception. So the first property of inception is title and is a string, and we it showed a string. The second property is generate is a string and it showed a string. The third property is, well, a, num a number, and it showed a number, and the other property is, is a property is called is long, and it's not a string, it's not a number, 
is not an array it's it's an object that is a function anonymous because it's anonymous it's a narrow function doesn't have a name No, but maybe it's another thing. So you are saying the two string method. To, to, you are saying that you want to compute the result yes, for example, immediately. Yeah, as we so as you as you as soon as you create the object, is long is true. This is not more a method. Is actually a way to define. So you can use an ife, an in, in immediate invoked function there, and you have to, to write that in that in that way. I don't think so, but maybe they added it in a recent time. No, clearly not. Oh, well, no, this is... Yes, you can. So you are computing a property, but this is not anymore a method. It, this was a method, right? This was a method, but this is not anymore a method, it's just... A calculation, a boolean a calculation that so if you change time without rebuilding the object, that will remain true. I think. If you just say inception dot time equal so if you say it dot time equal two hundred it will remain false. Because you calculate it when you create the object. So, again, this is not a method anymore that is computed when it's invoked, but it's invoked when you create the object. And then, so originally, it wasn't long, let's say. But then, if you change the property because you make a mistake, that's not a reliable. But this is a way, if you want to compute some value in a more complicated way, you can immediately invoke the function to compute some derived value but in that moment it's a value it's not a method anymore okay so let me put back the method yes you can also do a to string so actually what is doing here this inception is using a sort of in internal to string that prints the, the representation but you can have uh, a method here, this, this dot to string, in which you define how you want to print the function. Yeah, yeah, you can write this dot to string in this way, you, without override, without anything else. Equal, blah, blah, the function, and how you want to, to, to return the, 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 the object. Okay? It's, it's a function in this case. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Are you going to use GitHub in this answer? Sorry? Are you going to use GitHub? Uh, define uh, to use. Uh, so, only four cases, like to make push. so all the material will be on GitHub. We put all the material on GitHub. You can read on the user interface, you can use Git as, as you prefer. We are going to use GitHub, so w I told you to create a GitHub username because we are going to use GitHub for the exam. But not GitHub per se, we're going to use GitHub Classroom for the exam. Mm? So for delivering, for getting back the exam for you. Mm? So, and we will do um, one of the lab moving forward, we'll have one exercise on how to use GitHub Classroom so that you can experiment before the exam the entire process. Yes. If I print a type of inception like this, console.log, like we did for, you mean like, like here.
Inception. Inception. Tell you the type. It's an object. That doesn't tell you movie. <coughs> because this is type of is for getting the basic object. So in number, um, string, boolean, object, because arrays, etc., are all objects, right? No, the, okay, so there is, uh, because it's written here, so there should be, for sure, not type of. Maybe instance of, if it exists. No, because tell you which is the instance. It tell you is inception, is an instance of movie. You can check, for instance, in this case. So if uh, something is an instance of another object. But here, we, we, again, we don't have classes. So here, things are more, there is not the same level of uh, precision that, let's say precision that there is like in Java with your class. You have the instance that pertain to the class. Here, you can have more things. You can inherit pieces from different uh, objects, etc. Then almost everything inherit from object um, to it's a little bit more complicated. So if we merge uh, a movie with another type of object, we get uh, instance of something else? Uh? Maybe. Depends what is the other object. Uh, if you merge, you merge the properties. So you merge the second to the first, so it should keep the properties of the first. Should it the type, the, the, the instance of the first, in theory. Because it's merging is always from the left to the right. The, with a sign, with object of the sign. Okay, I think we have done for today and uh, let's see, we, we, we will meet next week in room 9, no, 1P or whatever it was. Have a nice rest of the day and weekend also. <laughs>